¿Cuál debe ser el papel del Estado en la sociedad contemporánea? Debe ser, pues, simple y sencillamente el papel de un gobierno que se dedique a gobernar para los ciudadanos o debe el Estado asumir responsabilidades empresariales, como está ocurriendo en nuestro país en la actualidad en que se están fortaleciendo las empresas del gobierno. Eh, la economista Deirdre McCloskey está tratando este tema en un nuevo libro. El libro se llama El mito del Estado emprendedor. Eh, lo escribió en autoría con Alberto Mingardi y ha sido publicado por Fundación para el Progreso. Eh, Deirdre McCloskey es una economista, escritora muy renombrada. Es autora de la trilogía acerca de, de la burguesía y el progreso de la humanidad, entre muchos otros libros. Obtuvo el reconocimiento el año pasado, el premio Una Vida por la Libertad, que otorga Caminos de la Libertad, una institución de Grupo Salinas. Y yo quiero darle la bienvenida a este programa, como siempre, a Deirdre McCloskey. Vamos a hacer la conversación en inglés. Deirdre, thank you very much for for talking to me uh, in, in this occasion. And tell me, what should the role of the state be? There's a book, uh, it's a very famous book by Mariana Mazzucato, The Entrepreneurial State, that defends the idea that the state can, can be an entrepreneur. Can it be? Is it, is it a good entrepreneur? Well, the, I, I think the one thing the state can't be is an entrepreneur. Because, you know, ideas come from individual minds and uh, <laughs> it's very unlikely that someone in Ciudad de, Ciudad de Mexico or Washington or London who, <laughs> who doesn't know the local situation or the details of the, I don't know, the engineering or the chemistry involved or the organizational um, constraints is going to make a good decision, an innovative decision in the economy. So, you know, <laughs> I think that her, her uh, I, I think the title of her book, though it's, it's, it's pleasing to socialists and uh, sounds like a good idea. I mean, gosh, if, if the state could come up with good ideas for innovation, I would be all for it. Because my main concern is, is poor people. I want poor people to be better off. But it is often argued, Deirdre, that uh, state companies are better, are better because they don't have a profit motive. So uh, supposedly everything they do is just for the benefit of the poor and the benefit of the, of the people. Is that true? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not true. Um, to, to think that way, is to suppose that the people in the government are saints. You know, and if they were, if they were all wise and saintly, then that would be fine. Then they would, they would do the right thing for, for the poor people. But the profit makers are better at helping the poor than, than is the state. Because, you know, <laughs> If you get a job from a profit-making firm, company, and you're able to support your family on it, and then you can buy bread when you want, and buy, you know, pay your rent, then you you have the dignity of taking care of yourself. Whereas all the all the state can offer is either subsidies or coercions. So I, I just don't think that subsidies or coercions are the way to for an economy to grow. I just there, don't think it's fair. It's, it, there, it doesn't sound very likely. Okay, you're, you're a historian, not only an economist. Tell us about what, what, when do people get the idea that governments should have companies? What, what, what are the first uh, government well, companies that we have in history? Well, in, in, in a way, they've always had the idea because It sounds reasonable that since you plan in your in your little family, it would make sense to plan at the, at the level of the economy. And in olden days, I mean, before uh, the 18th century, the rulers had a quite clear idea of what they wanted. They wanted glory for themselves. Um, and they, 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 
They didn't think that their main job was to help the poor of the world. Um, and, and then in the 18th century, in the 1700s, we get this idea, this unusual idea, that there shouldn't be masters and slaves, that, there, that, that everyone should have equality of permission. And that, and then, that was the liberal era. Mexico's first constitution, for example, was quite, quite liberal, and became even more so. The 1857 Constitution, the 1857 right. Constitution, which was That's actually right. the second, but it was, you know, it was the, the first right. time we actually worked with a with a real constitution. That's right. That's right. And 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 it worked pretty well. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's not perfectly, but f f fairly well. Mm -hmm. Then, in reaction to the liberal era, nationalism and socialism, and if you like that, maybe you'll like national socialism, as in Germany in the 1930s, um, came to be the reaction. And in a way, you see, it's a return to the earlier master and servant, master and slave relationship, except now the master is the politician or the, uh, or the, or the bureaucrat. So I, I, I'm against it. <laughs> okay, dear, dear, you, you, you're, you're telling us, you've just told us that what's important is the benefit of the poor, the benefit of poor people, yes. so they can yes. uh, stop being poor. What's better for them, to have a state company, a government company that uh, doesn't have a profit motive, or a private company with a profit motive? What helps the poor the best? Look, the only way you earn profit is by selling a product. I, I just went to lunch at a, a little uh, Salvadorian uh, eating place here in Washington, and they run for, on profit, and the food was very good. That's the only way you earn profit. If their food was terrible and I, <laughs> I got sick from it, they wouldn't earn any profit. Now, the trouble with the government, I mean, they're not against government entirely. There's some mm -hmm. things that the government should do, uh, fighting against the Russians, invading Ukraine, for example. But, <laughs> but, but, but the government is not good at providing goods and services because the profit motive, although it sounds nasty, is actually the best way to get jobs and the ability to consume to ordinary people. And that's been shown over and over again. When, 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 when China went capitalist after 1978, it went from $2 a day to $45 a day per person, which is a great improvement. Dear, there, uh, we were talking about Maria, Mariana Matsukato's uh, entrepreneurial state. She claims that uh, there are certain collective productive capacities uh, in society that work better than the in individual decisions, the individual capacities. Well, what do you say to it, that? It's true of some. Look, um, uh, regulations against COVID, right, infection, have to be done by the state. And, and although I think they've been overdone, nonetheless, I agree that the state should do it because an invasion of a germ <laughs> is like an invasion of Russians. Um, and indeed, military activity should be done by the state, a certain amount of policing, although the police have to be honest, not violent and corrupt. But most things are done better for profit motives. Although, you know, it's easy to exaggerate how much profit drives uh, people in business. Yes, it's very important and guides them to what people want. But people start, start businesses out of, not out of necessarily out of, well, how can you put it? Out of a, a pride in their own, um, their own uh, competences, their own abilities, 
out of, um, indeed, very often, out of a wish to help people. So it's not just nonprofits and government that contain virtuous people. Uh, uh, some, some economists, some left-leaning economists claim that uh, government companies create more jobs than private companies because they're not concerned about losing money. And they also claim that they don't fire people and that that's good for the economy because keep, people keep their jobs. What do you think about that? Well, I was once a, a, a Marxist and I, I understand the argument, but it's, it's a poor argument because the purpose of a, an economy is not to provide jobs. There's a famous story about Milton Friedman, who has a bad reputation, but should not. When he went to China first, a, a Chinese communist official showed him a, a, a people digging a big hole, a construction project, where they only had shovels. And Milton said, well, why haven't you got machinery to do it? And the guy said, well, you see, more people work if we just give them shovels and not machinery. And Milton said, aha, I have a way of getting even more jobs. Don't give them shovels, give them teaspoons <laughs> to move the dirt. And then you'll, they'll, then you'll have 100,000 people on this project. So it's clear that jobs are not the purpose of an economy. Goods and services, good health care, good housing, good food, that's the purpose of an economy. Uh, do, you, uh, do you believe that that can be accomplished with private enterprise? Yeah. Now, as I said, there are some things that, that government needs to do, but there are a lot of things that it does that it does not need to do. A, a, a somewhat shocking case, and I don't want to um, make people unhappy, but our roads. Nowadays, because you can put uh, transponders in automobiles and, and uh, price the roads, all the roads in Mexico could be private. <laughs> that is, they could be owned by, by companies. And that would probably be a better system than relying on the very indirect pressures that politics brings. Now, in a in a free country like me, me, like Mexico, there are um, there are pressures through politics. If the roads are terrible, the people protest and they get better roads. But the advantage of the profit-making private system is that if a road is bad, <laughs> it doesn't get any traffic because there's another road that is run by another company and it does a better job. Spectacular example of this is Uber, which is a very good service. I hope you have it in, in Mexico. Yes, we do. That has crowded out ordinary taxis because ordinary taxis are dirty and <laughs> badly maintained and so on and so forth. So we get to choose in the private sphere. Whereas the we that gets to choose in the public sphere is very indirect and inefficient. Yeah, I'm in favor of democracy, but it's slow, it's very clumsy. It doesn't focus on, I don't know, the kind of dog food that your dog needs or the kind of housing that you need in, the, in this detailed way that a market economy does. Well, Deirdre McCloskey, economist, thank you very much for this conversation. Well, thank you. I've, I've, in, I've enjoyed it. Yes. Y a usted, amigo televidente, gracias por escucharnos y gracias por vernos. Y lo invito a leer precisamente el libro El mito del Estado emprendedor de Deirdre McCloskey y Alberto Mingardi. Pero no se le olvide, nos vemos la próxima. Thank you.